We're going to have some fun in this video. We're going to be taking a look at discoveries that don't make sense and things that scientists struggle to explain. Science can give us the answer to many problems, but it doesn't have answers for everything. In fact, there are some things in this world that have left scientists as clueless as the rest of us, and you're about to see them now. Dogu figurines aren't rare. Archaeologists have found hundreds of them in Japan, mostly clustered in Kanto, Chubu, and Hokkaido. It's thought that the bizarre-looking figurines were created by the Jomon people. They were a culture that disappeared from history around 3,000 years ago, and nobody really knows why. That leaves us unable to explain the appearance of these clay figurines with their wide eyes and strangely shaped heads. They appear to be humanoid, but they fall short of being human. What are they supposed to represent? What were these clay figurines used for? Why is it that, in so many cases, they appear to have been broken on purpose before being buried? We can probably assume that the act of breaking them was ceremonial or ritual, but we have no idea what those ceremonies involved or why they were performed. To make matters even stranger, most Dogu figurines are found buried in a circular formation. That was clearly a deliberate act, too. If we understood the Jomon culture, we might understand the Dogu figurines. But unfortunately for us, we understand neither. Just as mysterious as the Dogu figurines are the four golden hats of the Bronze Age. The long, conical, elaborately decorated hats have been interpreted by some as witches' hats, but that's unlikely to have been their intended purpose. However, that doesn't mean that the people who made them didn't believe that they had magical qualities. The symbols on the sides of the artifacts certainly appear to have either astronomical or agricultural connections, so the people who wore them might have been trusted to make predictions about the weather or the future in general. All four of the hats were created somewhere between 3,400 and 2,800 years ago. Three of them were found in Germany, and the fourth was found in France. It's unlikely that they're the only hats of their kind that were ever made, so it's possible that more will be found by archaeologists in the years to come. The similarities between the objects are so strong that it's reasonable to assume that they served similar purposes despite being separated by both time and geography. As for what that purpose might have been, though, your guess is as good as ours. The Nomaly figurines were found when workers in Sierra Leone, Africa, were looking for diamonds. They're made of stone and could be considered similar to the Dogu figurines in that they look vaguely humanoid but don't represent humans. It's never easy for scientists to place a date on stone objects, but they're thought to be about 19,000 years old. They display remarkable craftsmanship for objects of such age. Local legends in Sierra Leone say that the Namuli figures represent angels that were cast out from heaven for bad behavior. That's just a legend, though, and the true origin of the sculptures is unknown. What can be said about them is that they would have been incredibly difficult to carve, with some of the figurines made from tough materials like granite. The presence of a spherical steel ball inside one of the statues is especially hard to explain as the ball could only have been made by heating metal up to a very high temperature so it would melt. Based on what we think we know about the Sierra Leone of the time, no such technology existed. Mexico has long been known and loved by archaeologists as a place where some of the greatest archaeological treasures on Earth can be found. But recently, it's gained a reputation for being a place where a whole different kind of object can be found. You'll need to suspend your disbelief a little for this, because the objects we're talking about might be alien in origin. How else do you explain these sculptures? They look exactly like the standard gray alien that appears in countless alien abduction stories. Discoveries like this have been made all over Mexico, but they appear more often than not in places like Michoacan and Teotihuacan. There are even a few sculptures that look like flying saucers, 
It's long been suggested that some of the world's ancient civilizations might have had contact with visitors from another world. Did the Aztecs and those who came before them see these alien-like creatures with their own eyes? If not, where did the inspiration for these strange designs come from? Sure, we can write some of them off as hoaxes, but not all of them. The Lady of the Spiked Throne sounds like the name of the next smash hit fantasy movie, but it's actually a leftover relic from the Indus Valley Civilization, which once lived in Pakistan and India. The curious looking artifact is thought to have been created around 2,300 years ago. It's a statue showing a female figure with an elongated head sitting on a spiked throne that appears to have wheels. Both the woman on the throne and the people around her have large, almond-shaped eyes to go with their elongated heads, and also feature beak-like noses and strange headdresses. Once again, you'd have to concede that they look more like classic depictions of aliens than human beings. Whoever the woman on the throne is, she seems to have been a powerful leader. She has four personal guards and sits behind a procession of other individuals. Right at the front of the procession is a bull, and on the bull's forehead is a symbol representing the sun. Does the woman represent a god, or is it a strange depiction of a warrior queen at a ceremonial event? We wish we knew! There's no agreement between historians about whether the so-called Danube Valley Civilization script is a form of written language, but if it is, it's the oldest written language in the world. This culture, of which we know very little, lived in the Balkan region and started engraving mysterious symbols on their artifacts and monuments around 7,500 years ago. There's enough variation between the symbols for them to be a type of alphabet, and the pattern of repetition suggests that the symbols might make words and phrases. We have no means of translating the symbols, though, so it's impossible to know for sure. If it did eventually turn out to be a language, it wouldn't necessarily be a surprise. The other artifacts left behind by the Danube Valley civilization suggest that they were light years ahead of their time with things like weaving, spinning, and processing leather, so it stands to reason that they'd be similarly ahead of their time when it came to communication. Some historians even say that it was this civilization that invented the wheel. Of all the ancient sites in Peru, Caral is the most mysterious. In fact, when it was first discovered by an American traveler in 1949, the residents of the nearest town thought he was making things up when he told them about what he'd seen. He wasn't lying, though. When archaeologists finally made it to the scene, they found the remains of a settlement founded almost 5,000 years ago on a dry Peruvian plain. The climate has done a near-perfect job of preserving the ruins of the city, including its seven pyramids, beautiful amphitheater, residential streets, and plazas. What surprised experts the most about it isn't so much what's there as what's not there. They expected to find fortifications to go with all the residential structures, but they found none, nor have they found any weapons buried in the ground. Instead, the only artifacts ever found here are musical instruments, including deer bone horns and flutes made of pelican bones. It seems that the people who lived in Karal were pacifists. Unfortunately, their lack of weapons or defenses might be the reason why they are no longer around to tell us their story today. There are more mysteries about the ancient British site of Stonehenge than just the standing stones. In fact, the gold artifacts that have been found close to the stones are arguably more mysterious than the stones themselves. The quality of the gold work ought to be impossible, considering that the artifacts are, on average, 4,000 years old. The details on the objects are almost microscopic. There were obviously no microscopes or magnifying glasses back then, and so there seem to be only two possibilities. The first is that the artifacts were made by people who had extreme short-sightedness, which would allow them to see minute details when close up, but almost nothing at a distance. The second is that the people who carried out the work 
did so much damage to their eyesight in the process that they may have gone blind. The collection of artifacts is informally known as the crown jewels of the King of Stonehenge, but there's no evidence that they belonged to a king. They were found inside Bush Barrow, an ancient tomb that also gave up a collection of fine jewelry, a gold lozenge coat fastener, and a beautifully decorated dagger. In 1902, an artifact made of gold and bronze was pulled out of a bog on the Danish island of Sjælland. That artifact is now known as the Trundholm Sun Chariot. It's probably from the Nordic Bronze Age of 3,700 years ago, although it could alternatively be 1,200 years younger than that. It's been labeled a chariot because it's a disc-shaped object being pulled by a horse that is unusually mounted on wheels but there's some debate about whether the disc should be described as a chariot. It's on wheels, but so is the horse. The wheels might have been there to make it easier to pull the horse along the ground, rather than to suggest the function of the disc. There are some archaeologists and historians who believe that it might actually be a primitive calendar. The golden side of the disc has dimensions associated with one-third of the solar year, whereas on the dark side, the large concentric circle has dimensions associated with six lunar months. The artifact could have tracked the solar calendar on one side and the lunar calendar on the other, with time marked by the position of the sunlight or moonlight on the surface of the disk. In January 2022, a skull was discovered in the Judean desert. There's nothing all that strange about that. But there is something strange about what's on the skull. It's covered in asphalt. That should be impossible because the skull is 9,000 years old. It's only survived for this long because it's spent all of those years deep inside an arid cave called Nahal Himar. The layer of asphalt didn't get here by accident. It was applied as a thin layer by smearing it on the back of the skull, after which Thin threads of asphalt were created and added to the smeared layer to create a mesh effect. Archaeologists think that this was probably the work of the Natufian culture, although they can't say how or why. They think that the Natufians practiced ancestor worship both as a means of honoring the dead and also demonstrating their status within society. Family affiliation determined almost everything back then. So, being able to prove that your ancestors were of a certain status would have been useful. This pattern might have denoted the status of the owner of this skull. It's a neat theory, but without more evidence, it's little more than a well-informed guess. Ninjutsu was both a form of art and a means of planning guerrilla warfare in feudal Japan. And it might have begun with this next set of mysterious artifacts. They're leftovers from the Siege of Odawara, which was led by Toyotomi Hideyoshi in 1590. They might look like little more than sharpened stones to you or us, but experts on Japanese history think they could be prototype versions of ninja weapons. The flat stones are of particular interest, as they might have been precursors to what later became shuriken throwing stars. Archaeologists and museum curator Akihiro Iwata believes that he's identified similarities between these artifacts and weapons that are known to have been used around 100 years after the Siege of Odawara. The flat stones might not be conclusive on their own, but they're accompanied by clay versions of Makibishi caltrops. You could perhaps write one resemblance off as a coincidence, but it's harder to write off both. That's not to say that there were ninjas involved in the siege, but the siege might have been the origin point of ninjutsu. There were celebrations among archaeologists in Rome in July 2021 after an astonishing accidental discovery. The discovery might look like a simple travertine slab to the untrained eye, but it's actually a massive pomerial stone. This stone once marked the city limits of Rome and it's the oldest ever found. It dates all the way back to the reign of Emperor Claudius in the year 49. It would never have been found at all was it not for excavation work being carried out ahead of the creation of a new sewage system in the city. 
This is already a spot of known interest for archaeologists because it's directly underneath the mausoleum of Emperor Augustus. The area around a pomerium in ancient Rome was considered sacred. It was forbidden to live or work on the land, and nor were people permitted to cross it carrying weapons. Only 10 pomerial stones have ever been found in Rome, and this is the first to be discovered in more than a century. Historians have always known that Emperor Claudius expanded Rome beyond its original city limits, but now they have a much clearer picture of how far out he pushed the boundary. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!